What is up everyone and welcome back to my channel. I'm Financial Coach Jess and I have a very different video in store for you today. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking all about my journey to $100,000 in bookkeeping revenue. And it feels so just surreal even saying that out loud. On a random whim, really, I ran a lifetime report for my business in QuickBooks Online in June, and I found myself staring at my phone, mouth gaping open as I looked, and it was $99,000 in bookkeeping revenue. And I was just in shock. I knew that I was gonna hit $100,000 in July. I am so glad that I had several weeks to process this and really think about what I wanted to put in this video. And my message for you today, I want to share the biggest ups and the biggest downs that I've had on my journey to $100,000. And keep in mind, I started at the ground level, like zero subscribers, zero followers, zero dollars in revenue, zero, everything everything was zero this is technically a follow-up video to this video here where i go in depth on the bookkeeper launch program itself this was the first big investment i made into my business and it really propelled me forward and it put everything into motion for me so if you're wondering what my very first step was in starting my business make sure you check out this video here if you're wondering how i grew my bookkeeping service to a hundred thousand dollars then keep watching the very first thing that i want to talk about is how i got my first client and what the job was exactly if you're looking for your first client i highly recommend doing exactly what i did i finished the bookkeeper launch program in october of 2017 and i immediately set up my linkedin profile my Facebook page, my Instagram account, and my domain name website. And really Bookkeeper Launch walked me through step-by-step step how to do all of that. So it was not overwhelming or expensive. I was so excited to get my first client. So I announced my new business and I explained what services I was now offering, which included QuickBooks Online setup, monthly services, and bookkeeping cleanup. I had narrowed down my niche, but I was also open to taking on anyone that I felt very confident about because I wanted to get some really strong testimonials and a little bit of experience since I was just starting out. On LinkedIn, I had a copy paste welcome message that explained how I serve small businesses and I started going through my first degree connections on LinkedIn and then eventually I went through my second degree connections here in St. Louis and started sending out those messages to businesses that I wanted to meet or businesses that I already knew of. I started tracking my acceptance and reply rate and I made adjustments and tweaks to my message so that I can try to increase both of those. Eventually, Eventually, I got a reply from a business owner who would turn out to be my first client, and she was just starting up her business in the health and fitness industry, which is really what I had hoped my niche would be in, so it was perfect. She needed help getting set up in QuickBooks Online, and she also wanted a couple hours of training on how to navigate the software. So I sent her a proposal for $350, and that included the setup, and then also it had a little bit of cleanup, which I had planned on using those transactions of cleanup in order to show her how the software worked. Let me pause here and say that I sound pretty confident and collected talking about all of this now, but at the time I was freaking out. Imposter syndrome was through the roof and I was terrified that she was somehow going to find out how nervous I was about this first job. And I didn't let it stop me, but I was just sick nervous. Guys, seriously, I remember driving very slowly to her office, parking, and my mind is like, it's not too late. You can still back out. You don't have to do this. And like I said, I'm glad I didn't let the fear stop me, but this is totally normal to feel nervous and just really afraid of the unknown. You have no idea how this is going to go. The business owner paid me $175 when she signed the contract, and then she finished the payment with another $175 when I had finished setting everything up and I had walked her through the software and she was very clear on how everything worked and it felt so amazing to get that first payment really celebrate that first client because it's a huge accomplishment to take really what was just a hobby in a way and turn it into a real life business it's not like the floodgates opened up and after that i had you know just tons of clients knocking down my door to work with me but there was something just so special about the confidence that i received when i got that first payment and really had 
a business. I have no doubt that the training was a little bit all over the place. I'm sure I stumbled over my words, but it was the messy action that I needed in order to move forward. I knew that this process worked. So that was month one in business for me. That was the only client I had that month and it took that I was working in my business and I was really focusing on marketing, learning more about marketing and I was focusing on talking to other business owners and connecting with them. You cannot just wait for people to come to you. Passive is not gonna cut it and honestly it does a huge disservice to business owners that are out there that desperately need your organization and your services. My advice for you if you're still looking for your first client is to set up one-to-ones with professionals in adjacent industries. So set up referral meetings with accountants, with insurance providers, real estate agents, attorneys, go to BNI meetings, go to networking meetings as many times as you can for free. And I've heard other bookkeepers and other financial coaches use this excuse. They say, what if I go and I meet with an accountant and they also offer bookkeeping? I'm going to look like an idiot, right? Or what if I go to an accountant? and they ask me questions I don't know the answer to, I'm gonna look like a fraud. And this is some tough love, but you need to stop digging up excuses that are rooted in your insecurities. And instead, you need to focus on solutions that stem from your goals and from your dreams. So you meet with someone who's not a good referral partner, so what? The risk versus reward of getting out of your comfort zone and meeting other professionals is ridiculous. Really think about this. The risk is what? Hurting your pride, feeling shy, saying the wrong thing. Literally no one cares. It's not a job interview. They're not evaluating your work history or your knowledge. They're asking you what problem you solve, how you solve it, and if you're a genuine and relatable person. At least that's what I'm looking for. On the other hand, this is what the reward looks like of getting out of your comfort zone and talking to these professionals. You're able to create lasting relationships. You're able to serve people in their circles. You're able to turn good businesses into great ones because now they have positive cash flow. They know where they stand financially and they're always prepared for tax season. To recap, the very first step that I would take if I was still trying to get my first client is to put yourself out there get out of your own way and take messy action by allowing the doubts and the imposter syndrome to creep in you are literally robbing small businesses of the services that you provide every month every week that you go not telling people about your business because you're scared or afraid is another week that a small business is struggling because they don't have the foundational skills that you you have to keep solid records of their books. Like I said, get out of your own way and fail. Fail fast so that you can make adjustments. And this really leads into my second client. And don't worry, I'm not gonna go every single client and tell you every single story, but these first two clients really do make some key points that I wanted to talk about in this video. My second client I also got through LinkedIn and it was worlds different from my first client. This client also needed monthly bookkeeping and they were a real estate company, so their books were way more complex to say the least. Not only was the business structure something that I wasn't super familiar with, but the business owner also wasn't interested in using QuickBooks online because he already had a different software set up with the company. This should have been a big red flag for me that this was not going to be a good fit and I wish I had drawn a hard line in the sand and said I only work in QuickBooks Online. Of course I have that rule now but I didn't then because I really wanted to get a solid monthly client. So I was very transparent with him and said I'm not familiar with this business structure, I'm not familiar with this software but I am willing to learn and he was okay with that. He wanted wanted me to gradually take things over, so we started with just account payables. He asked me how much that would be after our initial meeting and looking over at how the business was structured and how much money was going out every month. I wasn't exactly sure how to price this,
this and really pricing is something that I struggled with for about a year into my business because until you're familiar with how bookkeeping works and what a, a general workload looks like, it is hard because it is so subjective when pricing out how much a task will actually be. And I know now I should have asked more questions. I should have said that the quote will be in the proposal after I'm done looking everything over, but instead I just blurted out $500 a month. And this is the only time I ever did that. And I'm still not exactly sure what happened or why I did that, but nevertheless, he said, okay. And he signed the contract. This was not a great fit for either of us. And a few months later, he let me go saying that he wanted really a big accounting firm to come in and take over the books all at once instead of piecing things together. Looking back, of course, I can see that this was 100% the correct decision. It just wasn't a software or really a business structure that I wanted to be in. But at the time, I was devastated. It was my first monthly client that I ever had. And at the time, it was making up somewhere between 80 to 90% of my overall revenue. I started questioning everything. Is bookkeeping really the business that I want to be in? Is this really suited for me? What if he thought I was just incompetent? What if I go and I fail other businesses? is too. And this, guys, is the most important note of the entire video. When you accept clients that are not a good fit for you, you will question everything. When you serve clients who are a great fit, everything will feel so aligned. And this is why it's so important to be clear in your messaging and in your copywriting who is a great fit and who is not. Really, I knew in my gut that it was not a great fit. Plus there was like, a million signs, but the doubts kept coming in. What if I lose out on this experience? What if I lose out on this money? What if I can't find any other monthly clients? And those are very real doubts that will creep in and they will cause you to accept clients that are not a good fit. Also, don't confuse this with looking for and only accepting perfect clients. That is not what I'm talking about here. In this situation with this particular client, not a good fit meant that his problem that he had in his business, I personally was not equipped to solve. In this instance, there was nothing inherently wrong with his business. It's just simply the fact that I was not equipped. I didn't have the skills to solve the problem that he had. I so wish that I could sit here and tell you guys that after he let me go, I learned my lesson and I never accepted clients that weren't a great fit ever again. And only accepting really awesome clients is what led me to 100K but that is not what happened at all. This was one of the biggest mistakes, if not the biggest mistake that I made in my business. And I have learned my lesson now, but I made this mistake continuously for about two years. And I can honestly say I like my business a whole lot better now than I did then when I kept taking on clients that were not a good fit. And that's why I really wanna drive this home. I went on to accept clients that I knew weren't a great fit and I wanna share some of the other warning signs with you guys so that you can pick up on these as well. One of the warning signs that I came to recognize is when a business owner was just disorganized beyond all reason and they had no desire to change. And this is a huge warning sign because there's a difference between a business owner who just needs a little bit of help. They need some assistance. They need to not wear so many hats and a a business owner who just has been winging it for years and they just live their life flying by the seat of their pants and they have no desire to change. That ended up being a huge warning sign for me and I don't take on clients unless they want to change, unless they want to improve in this area. Another warning sign that I've come to recognize is that if the business owner is very demanding and they have no regard for my time or the boundaries that I've set up in my business, they are not 
not going to be a good fit. I have structured my business in a way so that it supports my life. And that is a huge thing that I learned in Bookkeeper Launch is that if you don't have healthy boundaries, your business can very easily take over your entire life. And business owners that that has happened to, they don't understand those boundaries. They don't understand how to communicate. They don't understand the process by which they need to talk to me. So that is a huge warning sign is that if they have just no regard for the boundaries and the communication processes that I have set up. And another warning sign that might seem kind of obvious are business owners who want to find a shortcut for everything. They don't want to pay taxes. They don't want to pay people that they owe money to. They want to just shortcut everything. And like I said, that might sound kind of obvious, but that has been another criteria that I have to work through and see, you know, is this a quality that the business owner has? And if so, it's probably not going to be a good fit. And those really fall into the category of personality or character traits that don't align with my business and what I do. In addition to what I mentioned earlier about the business or the pain points themselves just don't align with my solutions and what I offer. It is so worth saying one more time, but if you justify clients, if you make excuses for clients who are not a good fit for you, you will begin to question everything about your business and ultimately you will get burnt out and you will want to quit. You are not a good fit for everyone. And please understand that and grasp that faster than I did. Some really good advice that I got from my business coach was this. I needed to repel the wrong people away from my programs just as much as I needed to attract the right people to them. And finally, in summer of 2019, this really clicked for me. Don't get me wrong, I was still really scared and nervous to turn people away who weren't a good fit for me, but here's the most beautiful part about it is my time was cleared up and I had time to tweak my messaging and I had time to really work on attracting the right people to me. It was so freeing because I, I no longer wanted to help everyone and when I run my business this way, everyone wins. So here's an example of that in summer of 2019. I get a phone call. I didn't recognize the number, so I let it go to voicemail. And as I'm listening to the voicemail, my jaw dropped. Guys, it was the same business owner that had owned the real estate company that had let me go. He had left a voicemail asking me if I could come back and take over his book. I could not believe it. My very first thought was, wow, this is it. This is my redemption. I can go back. I can totally show him that I am capable of doing this. I didn't call him back right away. I sat on it and I really thought about this opportunity. It was a huge monthly client and it would mean a lot of extra money each month since he wanted ongoing bookkeeping. But even more so at that point, it wasn't a good Bit. I still didn't really want to work with real estate companies and I still didn't want to work in that software. So what I did was I hopped on the bookkeeper launch Facebook group and I posted in the group the software that he used, the approximate size of the business, and I asked for some solid referral. Then I called him back and let him know that I personally was not going to be a good fit for his company, but I gave him some solid bookkeepers that knew the industry and the software that he was using inside and out and wow like talk about redemption are you starting to see how everyone wins in that scenario this way my time could be freed up and channeled toward business owners who were a great fit for me. The worst thing, the worst thing that could happen with your bookkeeping business or your financial coaching business is that your time is filled up with a bunch of clients who are not going to get you good referrals, who are not going to get you good testimonials. And ultimately they're not a good fit for you. All of a sudden you wake up one day and your time is maxed out. You don't even have more time to give to attract your ideal clients to you. That is worst case scenario. It's scary because this almost happened to me, but I am so glad that I switched my marketing and I started seeing it through a lens of abundance instead of a lens of scarcity. And I want you guys to do that too. 
let's go ahead and get into the numbers which i know you guys are very curious about now remember that this is just one of the services that my business offers and i'll go into quickbooks online and i'll share my screen so that you guys can see how the different years stacked up when it came to bookkeeping and what I did specifically so that you guys can replicate this process that got me to $100,000 in bookkeeping revenue. The first thing that I did and that really contributed to my success in bookkeeping was that I reached out to a ton of businesses on LinkedIn. I have over 5,000 connections now and I sent every single connection message with a personalized note. So I sent probably between 10,000 to 15,000 messages. And I know it sounds crazy, but think about it. I was full-time in my business from the very get-go. I didn't have a lot of clients early on, so I was spending probably a hundred hours a month meeting with small businesses and talking to small businesses on LinkedIn. Now I'll share my process for LinkedIn, but what I ask of you guys is don't just copy paste, change it so that it's your words and the way that you would communicate. Besides my ideal client is going to be different from your ideal client anyway. Keep in mind that I was tweaking and adjusting my message when I first started and during my first tax season, I really narrowed it down to two messages. One I sent out during tax season and the other I sent out when taxes weren't on people's minds. So this would be like June through November. I really started marketing and advertising for tax season in December. Here's the one I used during non-tax season that helped me get to 100K. Hello, I'm a bookkeeper in the area and I'm connecting with more small Small businesses nearby. I would love to hear more about your business. Here's a link to a short summary of how I partner with small businesses. And then I shared my business blog, which is not active now, but it spoke directly to my ideal client. Basically, this would be the spot for your lead magnet that is going to blow them away with value and expertise. I've gotten the most clicks and the most responses from that message. If they accept my connection, but they don't respond, I go ahead and send a follow up note saying, hey, insert their name. Thanks so much for the connection. Let me know if I can help you and your business in any way. Keep in mind, this is not like an overnight success. In my first one to two years in business, I sent this message to again, 10,000 to 15,000 people. It was very time consuming, but I was seeing a positive return and I was getting clients from sending that message. I also live in a suburban area right outside St. Louis. I'm about 30 minutes from downtown. So my location was very ideal and I pretty much kept my connections to St. Louis natives. If that message for LinkedIn is helpful for you or if you've been getting a lot of value out of this video, don't forget to hit the like button and also subscribe below. Another huge asset that helped me scale and reach $100,000 in revenue is my relationship with CPAs and accountants. During tax time, if the tax preparer is good at what they do, they are going to be overwhelmed with business. I found that a lot of accountants were more than happy to pass off certain bookkeeping clients to me during tax time because they just simply didn't have the time to be in the trenches with the client. I cannot stress this enough, but you need to get professionals around you supporting you that can send you referrals. Of course, you might meet some professionals that you end up not being a good fit together and you don't refer work to them and you end up not working together at all. But in my experience, a lot of the tax professionals that I've met, I've had great relationships and we've been able to send a lot of mutual referrals. Create a challenging but realistic goal of maybe meeting or having a one-to-one -one with an accountant once a week for a month or a couple months and then do the same with other adjacent industries too. If you don't feel ready, if you don't feel confident in taking on clients, maybe ask to shadow an accountant or shadow a professional in that way or contract work underneath them so that they're there if you have any questions as they come up. 
Don't just suffer in silence, guys. Work with these tax professionals. They look forward and they want our help. My third big component that helped me get clients was building my email list. My advice for you guys would be to create a very strong lead magnet that gets your ideal client a quick win. This could be a video tutorial or a checklist with a walkthrough, but you have got to be growing and nurturing an email list. Building and nurturing an email list really could be an entire video by itself. So if that is something that interests you, if you'd like to see more information on that, be sure to leave a comment below letting me know that you want to see another video on building your email list. Another important component that has helped me grow my bookkeeping service to $100,000 in revenue is that I have consistently invested in my business. I purchased a bookkeeper launch in 2017, but that wasn't the end of my investments into my business. In 2018, I invested $1,700 into mentors and programs that helped me grow. In 2019, I invested just over $4,000. And in 2020, so far this year, I have already invested over $5,000 into my business, into business coaching, mentors, and programs, like I said, that will help me grow and continue to scale. It is so important to step out of your pride and out of your ego and accept the fact that you don't know what you don't know when it comes to business and that you need help. If you are interested in purchasing Bookkeeper Launch, I would absolutely love to see you in the Bookkeeper Launch Facebook group and you can grab my link down below. If you are interested in becoming a financial coach, you can also see more information on my Become a Coach program below in the description. My encouragement for you guys is this. Just three years ago, I was stuck at a job under terrible leadership that I hated and honestly, I saw no way out. I had no background in business or bookkeeping. I started this journey not knowing what accrual based accounting was. I didn't know how to build a brand. I didn't know what a VA was or how to scale a company. And less than three years later, I'm here to tell you guys that success with this business is possible. It is possible to make $100,000 with just bookkeeping and learning and growing and becoming a true entrepreneur. 100% is possible. And there's no shortcut, there's no cheat code, there's no such thing as an overnight success, but I wanted to tell you guys and share this message that building a business that you're proud of and a business that gives you freedom in your life and the ability to create a life that you love is possible.